All right, guys, this is the first video in the packet on the human brain. And when we study the brain, we're going to work from the outside in. And so we're going to start with that outermost covering, go through the top surfaces of the brain into the middle of the brain until we get down to the brainstem. We're going to talk about the regions and the functions of each of those. Um, so in this video, we want to look at the coverings of the brain called the meninges, and we're going to do a quick look at the um, divisions of the brain or how, you know, how we categorize the areas of the brain. So I have pre-color coded uh, these three layers. I've got a blue layer, a red layer, and a green layer. If you want to pause the video and do that, go ahead. Okay, so let's get started talking about these meninges. And their purpose is to enclose the central nervous system. So we're going to enclose the central nervous system. Central nervous system which if you remember includes the brain and the spinal cord. We're gonna call it CNS for short. So this is not only the brain, but the spinal cord. Brain and spinal cord. And the uh, purpose for these uh, coverings is to protect and uh, provide nourishment for the brain and the spinal cord. So we start off with the, in blue, we have this outermost layer, and the name of this is called the dura mater, D-U-R-A-M-A-T-E-R. -E and in our uh, Latin terms that you guys have to memorize, you, you've seen this before, and hopefully you recognize that dura means tough. And uh, what you may not know is that mater means mother. So this translates to tough mother. And when we dissect the brain, they usually come with the meninges attached. You can't tear this. You can't pull it apart. It, it really is tough. And so the primary uh, purpose for this guy is um, uh, protection. <clears throat> Likewise, let's go. We're going to go with this green one that's on the inside here. Now, this one is very thin, but it still provides a. Um, a layer of uh, protection between the meninges and the brain. And this one is called the pia mater. And pia translates to delicate. And then mater is mother. So this is delicate mother. And it's, it's really difficult to even see this one. But what we're going to see is it provides this outermost wrapping and protects it from, um, it provides a barrier between uh, the, the uh, this red um, layer that we haven't labeled yet and the brain. Now, right on the other side of the pia mater is, uh, are those astrocytes that we talked about in the last chapter that provide the blood brain barrier. So let me, let me do an orange layer and just kind of make, make a dashed line. So those are gonna be the astrocytes with the blood brain barrier. Astrocytes, blood brain barrier. So we do a lot to insulate the brain from the outside environment. And um, if we remember, there's a lot of things that just can't get into the brain, like a lot of the more complex drugs, smaller things like glucose, water, carbon dioxide, and alcohol can cross though and get directly to the brain. I think the layer that's probably the most interesting is this one. And, and this is colored in and then there's these little cross hatches. So it looks like there's, I'm gonna point. So at the tip of my pen, there's a cavity here there's a cavity here, there's a cavity here, there's a cavity here. This is called the arachnoid mater. A-R-A-C-H-N-O-I-D-M-A-T-E-R. -E and uh, what a weird name. So I'm gonna write the arachnoid notes over here. Sometimes it's called the arachnoid layer. If you uh, remember, so this is our second layer, uh, if you know your Latin, you know that arachno is spider. So this is named because this layer looks like a cobweb. It's got a web-like appearance. A web-like appearance. And what we see is these cavities are actually filled with fluid. So there's a fluid in the brain called cerebral spinal fluid.
cerebral spinal fluid or CSF for short. And what we're gonna see is that the CSF circulates not only around the outside of the brain, but there's cavities in the brain called ventricles. And these ventricles, there's areas in the ventricles that produce the cerebral spinal fluid. And um, uh, then it circulates inside in these cavities in the brain called the ventricles and around and through these cavities that are in the arachnoid uh, layer. So this circulates in and around the brain. And it has two functions. So one, it's going to protect the brain. It provides a liquid uh, um, kind of a, a layer that, that it helps uh, protect the brain from um, damage and um, being jostled. So the CSF also offers protection. And then it also carries in uh, nutrients and removes waste. So it's got a nutrient waste function. And what happens is, so not only is it in the ventricles, but like I said, it fills into these cavities and it circulates all around the brain in this arachnoid layer. Well, you could have an issue. If you have an area that gets blocked and you, it gets plugged and it can't drain, it builds up pressure and that pushes in on the brain and that can cause headaches. It can cause, if it's pushing on a particular lobe, it can cause trouble with vision or speech. And so doctors have to go in and they have to drain that. And notice we have the skull here. So I don't know if we labeled that. This is the skull. So it's tricky to get in there and um, try to drain that away. Now, sometimes you can drain it and it stays drained. But sometimes you drain it and it refills back up. Either way, it's called an arachnoid cyst. Um, we have a person in Ohio that's relatively famous that suffered with an arachnoid cyst. It was former Buckeyes football head coach, uh, head, uh, Urban Meyer. And um, he retired from coaching and he said he had an arachnoid cyst and he struggled with headaches. And his doctor said one of the ways he had to treat that was he had to uh, reduce his stress. So, um, and for him, I think what happened was it filled up and then it wouldn't stay emptied. And so they put in what was called a shunt, which is a small valve that allows the fluid to drain off uh, continuously. But uh, it turned out that it must not have been too bad because he turned around then and he coached for the Jaguars, which didn't go well. So maybe he just should have uh, listened to his doctors and retired the first. But yeah, if you get at that arachnoid cyst, it can be a problem. The other thing I want to look at quickly are, are the, how we divide the brain into regions. And so I'm going to bring in the next sheet. And I pre-color coded this. So if you want to pause the video, and I used highlighter just because I needed to color a lot of big areas quickly. So if you want to pause and color code this, go ahead. All right, here we go. So in orange, so we've got four major regions. In orange, we have the cerebrum, which is by far the largest area of the brain. It takes up the most geography. And this is divided into hemispheres. So we have a right and a left hemisphere, which we can't see on this page because this is a mid sagittal section. And we should probably note that. We've got a mid sagittal section here. Mid sagittal section. And this is where all of our higher order thinking comes from, our um, planning, our decision making, our um, uh, you know, long-term thinking. And in pink, we have the next region, which is called the diencephalon. Cephalon. And you hopefully you remember that encephalo is brain. So the diencephalon is the area that controls relays between this and this and this. These guys don't communicate directly. If you want to communicate with the brainstem, you have to have something that goes from here to here to the brainstem, or the cerebellum goes from here to the um, diencephalon and down or so forth. So these don't have direct connection. This is the connecting region. So this is the connecting. In yellow, we have the brainstem. The brainstem. And this is the base functions. Like breathing, uh, heart rate, respiration, um, everything that keeps you alive. And everybody gets a brainstem. If you're a lizard, you have a brainstem. You don't get to have a cerebrum, but you get to have a brainstem. Finally, this guy back here is called the cerebellum. 
C-E-R-E-B-E-L-L-U-M, and that translates to little cerebrum. And this is the only time we're going to talk about the cerebellum. It kind of gets short end of the stick when it comes to the brain. This uh, helps us to uh, balance and walk. So uh, the um, uh, primary function of this is it, it assists in motor function. And if you damage that, you have a hard time um, walking. In fact, if you damage it, you get what's called ataxia, which means you can't stand or sit without help. Or sit without help. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a video on the cerebrum. We'll do the diencephalon and we'll do the brainstem. We're also going to look at the ventricles. But again, keeping with our theme, we're going to work from the outside down in. Okay, that gets us started on the brain. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.